Eatonville is American history. Eatonville is Central Florida history. I don't really know anything about Eatonville, Florida. I've never heard of it. It was founded by slaves. I do know that. I drive by there a few times. If you've driven I-4, you've gone through it. And it's a lot of traffic that comes through here daily. Eatonville, Florida, a tiny town rich with history. The slaves was here. Out of freedom, out of reconstruction, Edenville came out of that. My grandmother was born out right here in the 1800s. Generations of memories. Hidden in plain sight. Edenville is my roots. Looking to the future, we want to see Eatonville develop without losing its past. It has a lot of historical African-American heritage there. We need to know about it. Project Community, the town that freedom built. Thank you for joining us. I'm Summer Knowles. And I'm Stuart Moore. As the nation commemorates the holiday of Juneteenth, we are joining you from historic Eatonville. Juneteenth, now a federal holiday, marks June 19th, 1865. That's the day slaves in Galveston, Texas, finally learned they'd been freed more than two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. It was 22 years after Juneteenth on August 15th, 1887, that former slaves founded the town where we are standing right now. Eatonville, the town that freedom built. Just over one square mile, Eatonville is sandwiched between Winter Park and Maitland. Each year, thousands of people come here for the annual celebration of author Zora Neale Hurston. But Eatonville is so much more. Driving by or through, you might miss it. But if you stop and take a moment, you'll quickly notice this historical gem. When you walk into its post office, you can't help but feel an old-timey, small-town charm. Welcome to the Eatonville Post Office. How can I help you today? In part, because they only accept cash. This is the bank bedroom. And in one of the first homes built in Eatonville in the late 1800s, that's still standing on Taylor Street, now a museum of sorts and historical landmark, the same thing. You walk into one of the first mayor of Eatonville's home, and it just feels like Grandma's house. Or your Grandma's Grandma's house cookware to do her cooking. And you can't forget the town's annual Zora Fest, named for its most famous resident, internationally acclaimed author Zora Neale Hurston, whose face is sprinkled throughout the community. All of it very much living, breathing history of a tiny town built on freedom, built by freed men, just two decades after being emancipated. I think the story of Eatonville starts there. It's really, uh, people who had uh, had to decide where to go. Dr. Scott French is the Director of Public History at UCF. Going back south, hear the pop trees shake at night. Eatonville really begins as a dream of uh, people like Joe Clark. He was a previously enslaved man. And despite it not being far north, Sidney Rose McCall with the Zora Neale Hurston Museum says Florida was actually one of the places black people were trying to flee to because in Florida, you could typically find yourself in one of three situations. So you could either find yourself with an indigenous community, the Seminoles, where you would be safe and you would be immersed in their society, or you could find yourself at one of the Spanish forts on the coast where as long as you've converted to Catholicism, they let you in the front door, or you could find yourself at one of these free black communities. Recently freed black people who made their way to central Florida often found work in citrus groves, as was the case for Joe Clark, who along with others came to the area with the idea they'd begin a colony for colored people. The problem, nobody would sell them land. So we know from the, the only surviving issue of the Eatonville speaker, they, they describe how they are not able to buy land, but a whole-souled philanthropist named Lewis Lawrence of Utica, New York, came to the rescue. And those are the words they used. And he imagined that Florida had great potential and that it could be the most northernized of the southern states, that with northern capital and African-American labor, um, it could be uh, a real model for a post-emancipation society, a kind of shared governance. Zora Neale Hurston tells us that this went quite smoothly. There were no real conflicts. And yet she says that Joe Clark 
the others who were part of this settlement had a bigger dream. That dream realized in August of 1887, when Edenville became our nation's first incorporated black community. So what that means is that it was the oldest black town to be recognized by the United States government as a self-governing, self-determining black community. There were 27 African-American men who signed that charter and, it, and they went to great lengths to to make sure that people understood that this was something that was accepted to the people of Maitland as well, that they had the backing of prominent white citizens. Naming the town after Josiah Eaton, one of those prominent white citizens, certainly didn't hurt given the hostile racial climate and violence against blacks at the time. And to name Eatonville after this mayor, I think that was protective because because Eaton was well known, he was the mayor of Maitland. In one respect, you were self-segregating this black community that was able to preserve itself, but also from a white perspective, they were self-segregating and allowing this racial hierarchy to maintain its balance. And this story goes viral. Uh, all across the United States, there are newspaper articles about Eatonville. Booker T. Washington even writing about it in his work called The Negro in Business, where he featured Eatonville as a model of the African-American entrepreneurial spirit. I'll be back south, you know I'll be coming back home. But despite being touted as a shining example, throughout the decades, Eatonville has not been immune to the challenges that have historically plagued black towns across the country. Poverty often in plain sight, with no grocery store to buy fresh fruit or veggies within walking distance. And despite being an overwhelmingly black town, racism still penetrated their community. Like when KKK members showed up at one of the town's parades in the middle of the day without their masks. Additionally, a seemingly ongoing threat of gentrification. Yes, I-4 was slapped right through Eatonville in the 50s, but it was the county's plans to expand the city's main thoroughfare, Kennedy Boulevard, to five lanes that residents felt really would destroy their town's historical character and charm. It will simply destroy the entire town. So they fought it and won. And this, this town is not fit for it. But then another fight, this time plans for a medical waste incinerator plant. It's dioxins, <clears throat> burning plastic. And that followed by another fight against an adult entertainment presence. We are not going to stand for no foolishness to come in. Each battle fought, each battle won. I think Eatonville hung on. Um, it, it had to hang on through the Great Depression. It had to hang on um, as the towns around it grew and its place in the economy diminished. What made it survive though was this uh, sense of pride that the people who lived there took in it. And in fact, when you go into the school, one of the first things you see is this whole wall of faces. Zora Neale Hurston, of course, is very much featured on that wall, but also different mayors and elected officials of Edenville. So there is this building of pride from a very young age. A community with a past and present that coexist and a future constantly being reimagined. While Eatonville is America's oldest black incorporated town, its churches are even older. To this day, they are the cornerstones of this community. And as Christina Watkins shows us, their impact goes beyond religion. What does it feel like to lead this church that has such deep history in the town of Eatonville? It feels great to be able to be the leader and to have a group of people to follow the vision. The vision started here, inside this wooden building that's been standing tall since 1881, six years before Eatonville became an incorporated town in Central Florida. Surrounded by greenery, this is the oldest structure in Eatonville. It's now called the Thomas House, but it didn't always have that name. It used to be St. Lawrence AME Church. The town actually started at this church. It has a rich history. Led by Pastor Terrell Blair Sr., they hold services across the street from their original house of worship, keeping the past present. Every now and then, if you want to just stop by St. Lawrence and learn the history, look at the mirrors on the wall. Whether it's out in the open, or behind closed doors, 
Pastor Blair works to carry on the church's history. We still have, in this church, we still have the first Bible and the first pulpit inside this church. While leading his congregation to its bright future. What do you want people to learn when they drive past St. Lawrence and they see this church and even across the street, they say, well, what is this? Not often that you have a town where so many people pass through the town every day. And we want to be an impact not only here at the church, but in the town as people ride by to recognize that's where the town started at St. Lawrence AME Church. A year after St. Lawrence in 1882 came the town's second oldest church, Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. The only church on this side of the road where love, love makes, makes a, a difference. difference. <laughs> Macedonia shared a space with St. Lawrence before getting its own building right down the road on Kennedy Boulevard. Oh, we had first Sunday and we had the second Sunday, so and it was alternating. It's whatever it takes. When Pastor Willie C. Barnes was called to lead the ministry nearly 35 years ago, he said following the footsteps of some of Eatonville's pioneers. One of the relatives of Zora Neal pastored this church. And helping the church grow were major parts of his commitment to serve. He started with building a new sanctuary. Macedonia over the years has transformed from the old sanctuary to now to the future. We, we had an opportunity to say, well, let's take it out, let's destroy it. And I said, no, don't destroy it, build on it. And right here, I'm, right where I'm sitting right now is the foundation of that old church. You'll see that old gray beat up church. We still have it. Much like St. Lawrence, Macedonia is a pillar of Eatonville. Both pastors say they always look for ways to keep expanding outside of the church. All to be able to continue that outreach. Continue. And that includes being the first to open a major financial institution yes. in this town of Eatonville. Wow, that, that's my heart. For the last several years, Macedonia worked to bring in the town's very first credit union. It's set to open up this summer. The Unity of Eatonville Federal Credit Union. And, it was the, and the church was the basic foundation for that, where we plan on teaching about financial planning, teaching people about financial structure, and educating folk about um, the issues of finances, as well as investing. They were able to get this done because the church owns quite a bit of land in Eatonville. So does St. Lawrence, and Pastor Blair says he's got some big plans. We're prayerfully and, and uh, that God would allow us to build some senior citizen housing in the back of the church to uh, help senior citizens have a nicer place to stay. As both pastors look to the future of Eatonville, their main goal is to be more than a leader of a congregation, but a leader in the community. You cannot aid the community just staying in the four walls. You gotta be visible. You gotta be willing to do something for the community. I wanna see government and church working together to develop this community for the sake of these people. I wanna see people financially structured and taught. I wanna see folk in homes instead of renting. We fellowship, leadership, ownership, and worship. And, uh, and now we're able to flow uh, and while we're flowing, be able to impact people's lives. While the old St. Lawrence AME Church sits vacant, there are plans for its future. It's now the Thomas House, and the family who owns it is working to turn it into a bookstore. You know, I always have like a safe place to go to, and um, I, there's always somebody that I can rely on. Embracing the youth and building the future. Still ahead, how Eatonville is growing our next generation of leaders. Plus, a lot of what I think drew me back to Eatonville was this land. It doesn't have the fast pace of a big city or the views of downtown living, but there's something about this town why so many young people are choosing to come home to Eatonville. Next.
It happens no matter where you live. As kids become adults, they want to leave where they grew up and experience what else is out there. Eatonville is no different. However, now some of those adults are coming back home. And as Sheldon Dutez found out, there's an emotional reason why. And then, of course, the next generation is inclusive of the infamous Isaac Clark and Joseph Clark. Ruthie Critton's family tree reveals just as much about Eatonville as it does her relatives. I am a fifth generation resident of Eatonville, as well as a fifth generation of the founders of Eatonville. From this post office tribute and mural at the Boys and Girls Club. Our Catherine Alexander, the first postmistress of Eatonville, Florida, is my great grandmother. To famous family connection. The great Zora Neale Hurston was a basic friend of the family. Ruthie's family influence is sprinkled all over town. My father actually was the associate pastor at Macedonia for about 13 years, uh, dating back to the early 90s. And what was it like growing up in Eatonville? It was amazing. Um, full of culture, full of history. History that is on display. So when you see this, your family all mapped out like this, what's going through your head? To see these people that came together to um, incorporate something, not just for their own families, but for all the families here in Eatonville is, it's a huge sense of pride. It's astounding just to be a part of that. Ruthie is carrying on her family's legacy. She returned home to Eatonville after graduating from FAMU, and she and her husband plan to raise their son in town. She hopes that her son will be inspired by the relatives who paved the way for him and so many others. My great uncle Joseph Clark came down here with the intent to establish um, a community for his family and for um, other African American individuals. They put in the work and the effort that it took to establish a community with its own government, with its own um, cultural ties, historic ties. So I hope that my son finds value in just knowing that if you put in a little bit of effort and a little bit of work, um, you can kind of see your dreams come to fruition. It's the same recipe for success that helped Angela Allen's grandparents purchase their home in 1962. This is the backyard where I played a lot me and my um, brothers when we came over. Her grandparents have since died, but there are memories of them all over the property, including this old clothesline. I have left it up because I can't take it down yet. And why did you not take it down? Because every time I, um, wow, I didn't expect that. Come out here, I could visually see her hanging out clothes. She spent a lot of times um, and she had a style about hanging out clothes. Those lines, she touched very much with her hands. So grandma's hands was on those crow's lines. Childhood memories of carefree summer days, visiting her grandparents and playing with her cousins are what brought Angela to Eatonville after raising her own son in Orlando. She moved into her grandparents' house in 2020. Well, life happened. Um, I went through a divorce and I already owned this home. My gr grandmother quick claim deed the home to me. Why would I go out and purchase a new home or rent. So I just came here and I renovated it. The house looks a lot different from when her grandparents owned it. Cause you can see the dining room. She had yellow curtains. But their pictures and belongings serve as reminders of their love and sacrifice. She had a rocking chair that she would sit in um, all the time. And I just changed it into a room for me where I could pray, do yoga, but I kept the chair um, there. You could have easily rented this out and lived someplace else. What made you want to come here specifically to Eatonville? So I didn't want to sell this or give this away. I just took pride in it and felt like it was a part of my ownership and I want to pass it down to my son. Um, it's generational um, wealth and property. You know, I think for black folks, our birthright in so many ways is literally in the land that we occupy. I think our heritage, our stories, the parables that have been passed down to us generation to generation, it's tied up in land. The land and house that Jordan Vaughn's great grandparents built in 1946 will get a makeover. This will effectively turn into like a big open air dining room. But the heart and soul of this space will remain the same. Up until my grandparents both passed away, we would host cookouts here every weekend, fish fries, you know, for New Year's, we'd have what we called a pork parade, or it was pig's feet, chitlins, you name it. And it, you would just roll up and everyone would be gathered here. 
And so I think a big hope for this home is that this becomes yet another community space, a social watering hole where folks can just stop on in. I want to repurpose everything in the house, right? So even the, the metal door right here, I want to take that apart and use that to frame all of the photos of my great grandparents. So why was it important for you, even as you're remodeling this house, to yeah. keep elements of the original house? I want to pay homage to the past. So you grew up in Lake Mary. Yes. You went to college in Atlanta. I did. Lived in DC and New York City. I've lived all over, yeah. But Jordan says a combination of factors, including his family's generational contributions to Eatonville and his grandmother's passion for education helped inspire him to return to Central Florida. As you get older, as you think about what life you want to build for yourself and what that looks like, I think oftentimes it mimics your ancestors. So here I am, generations later, wanting to come back and be a part of what it looks like for my family to reoccupy this land. A legacy he hopes will live on for generations to come. I want 100 years from now for my great-great-grandchildren to be sitting here, hopefully with your great-great-grandchildren, and having this conversation about what does it look like to create a community for Black folks where we feel safe and seen and valued and lifted up. According to the latest census data, Eatonville's population grew nearly one and a half percent from 2010 to 2020. Forever thankful. Thank you for giving me a second chance. It really changed my life. From Eatonville to the NFL, the professional athlete who says this town is the reason for his success. And it has its ups and downs. Running a company is never easy, but here there are unique struggles. The controversial plan some Eatonville business owners say is the only way they'll survive. Next. Big name corporations call Eatonville home. Tesla, Land Rover, CenturyLink, even West 2. But the large corporations, West included, are not the heart and soul of this town. That belongs to small business. Meet Moline George, owner of Mad Crab, a seafood restaurant right on Kennedy Boulevard. It'll be nine years in September. Moline has been in this location for nearly a decade, serving up great eats and the best wings in town. It has its ups and downs. You know, the positive part is uh, the relationships I've built with my loyal customers, as well as the individuals and the community that support me. That's really a good thing. It makes it easy for us to open up the doors every day. But while Mad Crab is a nonstop door of customers from to-go and delivery service, most of her clients don't live here in Eatonville. Honestly, not very many. The majority of my customers are outsiders. So they come from outside of Eatonville, uh, but mostly we get a lot of travelers. We get a lot of people that are coming from uh, different parts of the country. And that is a major problem, says LaVonda Wilder, the founder of the Eatonville Chamber of Commerce. So when you have an opportunity to do business with your neighboring communities, do business with them, invite them over here. Businesses have struggled in the past to sustain local customers. And now there's a new focus to change that by bringing businesses together. We market for our, our members. We market for the community also. We're into relationship building. That's our main focus. We're here to make sure that the communities know that certain businesses exist. It's businesses supporting other businesses. Councilwoman Wanda Randolph knows all about that. She's lived here for the last 40 years and owns a local company herself. You know, you've probably seen businesses come and go and, and fight through different things. What makes things different now on how businesses will be able to continue to profit here? Well, the difference now is that I think most of the businesses are very excited about what is going to happen here in Eatonville, Florida. The time has come for Eatonville to move on and to move forward. So I'm looking for this opportunity as well as other business owners to promote growth to promote more revenue to our town and also to be functioning as well as other surrounding areas. That optimism comes in the form of a major development, the Hungerford Project. Sitting on the grounds that's coupled next to the school bearing the same name would bring shops, housing, a grocery store, things Edenville currently does not have. We want to see change and we embrace uh, the plan for what we have for the Hungerford property. So we have one of the highest property 
tax base in Orange County. And what it's going to do, it's going to lessen the burden of hardship of the taxpayers of our community. But some see that as a local business killer and not an opportunity. One of the things I think some of the residents are concerned about is losing their identity as far as Eatonville, being the oldest African-American city here, township in the United States incorporated. And what I tell them is that you don't have to worry about that because what we are is what we are. It's not gonna lose our identity. The only thing that's gonna bring about change and is more businesses, more wealth, and also a better life for everybody. Nicole Oriol is the deputy executive director of an organization called HELP. And the main focus is keeping people who own homes in Edenville in their homes and planning how their homes will stay in family hands. She says the increased amount of people can only help. For our business, I think it would help with the community. I think it's, it would be more so the community coming out and having some place to go and to hang out together. I think that's what we're going to see more of once the town center is built and once the new places are, are put in, in place. Like every developing area, there are some inherent challenges. Traffic snarls easily as vehicles navigate the two-lane road. When it rains, the roads pull water in some areas and increasing residents won't make those things easier. But challenges and a small town combined can be used to your advantage. Well, I think in other communities, you can't just reach out and touch someone. But in a small community like Eatonville, you can actually call the mayor if you're having concerns. You can call the council people if you have concerns. So I think that can help pave the way for people, too, that want to do business in the community. For Moline and Matt Crabb, she's ambitious and wants to grow. I would have to leave to grow. Um, I've had this... Uh, wanting to grow but when COVID hit it did a lot of you know it kind of you know slowed me down a little bit but I would definitely have to leave the town of Eatonville in order to grow. So what would it take to make you stay here? Uh, I would say the growth of the property that they're building right now that would be the one thing that would make me stay. I love this I love the community I love the people in the community that support me but it's about growth and sometimes you reach a point where you're stagnant and once you're stagnant and you can't do anymore it's time to you know it's time to window keep moving the hunger for a project is expected to bring in more than four billion dollars in impact for the construction alone money local companies hope to cash in on however not everyone board when it comes to that development we're going to dig into that debate a bit later but first ask anyone who grew up or lives in Eatonville there is a special charm here that you do not find in other communities. Tonight, Gabrigetti has found out residents here, young and old, truly know each other and their roots run deep. Different generations, but the same sense of pride. Born and raised here, my whole family. It was just a small community. What we had, we enjoyed. Black people do like be here and like stay here. Just like for Vera King. These are all nieces and nephews. She has stacks of photo albums that show a snapshot of the past 84 years in her hometown, Edenville. It's strange now when I look back that there are very few people left out here that were, you know, here when I was born and growing up. A home filled with history is where the heart never leaves. How many black communities do you know anymore? After a few jobs away, King moved back home with her then husband, who got a role at the local police department. She's been living in this house for over 50 years. I was very comfortable with raising up my kids because I had the kind of neighbors and I grew up with those kind of neighbors that everybody watched you. It was my roots. This was the it is my roots. And it is my love. Gloria Jones has 70 plus years of tales to tell. You could walk the streets, cross the highways. We only had one highway coming up as children. Edenville has always been her haven. We just felt free. Especially during the country's divide by racism and segregation. I didn't grow up with that in me because I didn't experience that unless I went out of Edenville and we didn't experience anything, but we knew you had certain doors to go in if you left the town. 
King and Jones hope they're not the final chapters of the town that's filled with stories. I guess this is the way it works in most small towns. The children grow up, they go to college, and then they don't come back except to visit. 16-year-old Alexander McMillan hopes to do the opposite after he goes to college. I want to come back to Eatonville and design a building for them. I want to redesign the um, Zora, ne Zora Neil Hurston Museum. Why is that? Because um, Zora, she's also a big part of Eatonville's history because she grew up here and she used to write some of her books about Eatonville. And I feel like because of that, she deserves to have a bigger, better museum. McMillan is a descendant of Joseph Clark, who was the founder of the town where he too wants to leave his mark. If it's not preserved, then a, a lot of history is gonna be lost. Although some of his peers don't have the same plans to stay, they know that acknowledging the path that was paved for them will better prepare them for their next steps. There's a place out there that really connects with us and a place that we can go and make our voices feel heard. It kind of empowered me to be like it. Like, it really made me feel accomplished to be black. Five to ten years from now, hopefully the kids have a much better living situation. Although we have new houses built within the community, um, you know, not everyone's able to afford those, but I definitely just hope that something gives. Their elders say it takes a village to save and sustain. You're not going to go any place until you start working together. Don't just live here. Be involved here and make it successful. Keep it successful. The main thing they all agreed on is Eatonville's historical value should be protected and preserved for generations to come. Got to look over that hump and see, oh wow, this is a beautiful place. Yeah. This is special, you know, and, and it's amazing. Back home with Ha Ha, the NFL star grew up in Eatonville and he has big ideas for the future of his town. That's next. We are here in historic Edenville, which is Zora Neale Hurston's hometown. We created the Hurston not only to honor Zora Neale Hurston's legacy, but also to honor the community members who made Edenville possible back in the 1880s. We have had several groups of people who have literally taken a pilgrimage across the country from places like Washington State, Oakland, California, have driven all the way across the country to come to historic Edenville. We've also had people on the international stage as well. So we've had people in here from places like South Africa, Germany. I don't know what is going on in Germany, but she is really, really popular over in Germany. So the exhibit that you're seeing behind me right here is actually part of a rotating exhibit. So every year starting on January 7th, Zora Neale Hurston's birthday, we have our Zora Neale Hurston Festival. And so each year we have a different exhibit that is on display. So this exhibit right here is actually part of an Afrofuturism exhibit that we will be doing throughout the next several years. Although our museum space is very intimate and cozy, we like to tell people that it is small but mighty. We have had people who have come in here and have spent two hours just sitting in the space, taking the space in. He's traveled the country playing in the NFL, but here in Eatonville, is home for Haha ha Clinton Dix. He grew up here, went to school here, and never misses an opportunity to come back. He took our Kendra Douglas on a walk down memory lane. Hunger for a preparatory school used to be here. Uh, my grandmother went Walking here. down the streets of Eatonville. I love you too, D. <laughs> That's my boy Dion, man. Black Almost everyone seems to know Haseen Clinton Dix. They've always called him Haha. Ha. You know, it's, it's not a street you can't go down that you won't see a cousin or aunt or somebody that knows your people. Haha ha knows Eatonville like the back of his hand, and it's the hands of this small town that helped push him to have a successful football career. But he might not be where he is today if it wasn't for this school. Walk me through. We have some pretty prominent people, and then we have you. How does it feel to see you up here? <laughs> it's, it's no feeling to describe, and it's, it's a blessing just to, to be able to motivate students to to go the extra mile when they, when they walk into this building and see my picture up here. Um, 
Wow, I mean, first round pick is, is 1% maybe, not even 1%, is, is awesome. The Life Academy of Excellence. It's the place that rooted him, molded him, even if it wasn't by choice. I don't think if, if, if my mom didn't bring me to the school or drag me to the school, I should say, if she didn't drag me down to TLA, I don't think I'd be half the man I am today. The only man in the house with two sisters, Clinton Dix got into trouble and was held back in the sixth grade from Lockhart Middle School. So his mother enrolled him in Life Academy of Excellence to get him back on track. I had to uh, adjust to, to one, being in a private school, um, you know, learning about the Bible that I didn't know anything about, you know. Uh, I remember my first week in school and my teacher asked me to turn to Psalms. You know, I was looking into S's. You know, I had no clue that you know, Psalms thought it would be, you know, at the time. And but that school was where he met the man who would change his life. <laughs> <laughs> Former principal Dan Thomas. But just you can tell um, the difference that was made. Just here, being here, doing this, and just moving forward. You can see the growth. It's heartwarming, you know. Um, this, it was the beginning of everything for me, you know, and um, just coming here and having a fresh start, um, being able to, to start over again from the mistakes I made in the past, and um, I just call it a, a, the best opportunity I've ever had in my life. That's why whenever Ha Ha can, can we give him a hand? The former problem student, as he called himself, tries to do his part to motivate today's generation to excel in school. I just want to tell y'all, man, that y'all can do anything y'all want to do in life, and it starts right here. What were the difficulties as a black male in the NFL? Being a, a, a black athlete in the NFL, um, it just helped me transition to the man I am today. And you always hope that, you know, when your kids go away, they go and they go, they be successful. So him being successful, amazing. He believed in me, man, and, and, and told me, like, you know, listen, I'm gonna give you this opportunity and I don't, don't blow it, you know? And um, I just never looked back. And, and that's been my story since then, it's just keep moving forward and don't look back. With what felt like the whole town of Eatonville standing behind him, the motivation propelled Ha Ha to focus on the sport he grew up playing. Football. The game changed, haha. -ha. I just fell in love with it, man, and it, and it helped me uh, definitely get a kickstart to life. Earning him a D1 scholarship to play for the Crimson Tide, the University of Alabama. What would you tell your younger self now, now that you look back at what you've done? What would you tell your younger self? Anything is possible, you know, just everything happens for a reason, and you have to take it under the chin and keep moving. Still carrying the town on his back, Haha -ha did what only 1.2% of college players have the opportunity to do. Defensive back goes Alabama. Clinton Dix, round one. You gotta love this name. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. 21st overall pick by the Green Bay Packers. But the former cornerback making it to the pros wasn't enough. There was one goal he hadn't conquered. You know, this is something that I just wanted to do. College. And also that I, you know, I owe my mom. And I think going back to school uh, opened my eyes up to um, just a lot in society and uh, what's going on around me. It kind of gave me a different perspective of, of life and um, the hard jobs that uh, police have. Um, it, was, it was really eye-opening. Now having earned a degree in criminal justice, Clinton Dix aspires to help change the community that built him. You know, once I realized that I am a, a black male in a in Eatonville, um, in a black corporate town that I didn't know much about as a kid. Um, you know, the older I get, I realize how much, how rich this, this, this place is. And though he doesn't know exactly what the future holds for him. I want to do great things in this community to make it a better place for the town of Eatonville. I just want to leave this place in a better, better position than I came into it. And um, I think by uh, helping provide um, you know, tools and uh, resources to my community um, will help better us in the home. Haha says he hopes to do more talks at his school and in the community in hopes of creating opportunities for more young people in Eatonville. We welcome anything and everything just as long as that development does not harm our heritage, our culture, our history. It's universal in Eatonville. People living here want to see improvements to their tiny town, but at what cost? The battle between building up and hanging on to history. Next.
there is no shortage of ideas over Eatonville's future. Most notably, what should be done with this huge, empty plot of land where the historic Hungerford Prep School once stood. Developers have their eyes on the 88 acre property, but some residents are a little hesitant. As Gail Pascoe Brown explains, they don't want progress at the expense of preserving the past. There is something very special about Eatonville, about any of these historic black towns that Eatonville represents. It's home. Uh, we was born and raised here. My mom and dad first moved here in the 60s. We keep our heritage. We protect our culture. We're not a melting pot. So when you come here, the idea is not that you're going to assimilate or we're going to assimilate. It's you appreciate who we are, where we come from. The preserving of the history of a people helps them to see who they are, to see from whence you come so you'll know where you're going. These are just some of the people preserving and improving the town of Edenville. The PEC, or the Association to Preserve the Edenville Community, has made it its mission to do so in the town that Freedom built. In 1987, the Orange County Board of County Commissioners determined unanimously to five lane, the two lane road that's right outside. That decision would have destroyed the historic character of Edenville. And taken homes and other property, the first thing the PEC did was become an advocate and oppose the project. In Wina Theory, the PEC's executive director says over the decades, the people have spoken out about what they want to see at Edenville. We want to see progress. We want to see development. We welcome anything and everything just as long as that development does not harm our heritage, our culture, our history. You all are getting a touch of Eden deal today. The Mosley House Museum opened in 2000 thanks to the care of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. This is the home of Jim and Matilda Clark Mosley. And they were an early pioneer family in Eatonville. This house is the second oldest structure in Eatonville, but it's the only one that has been restored and it's being maintained. Miss Tilly, as she was affectionately called, was the niece of Joseph Clark, Edenville founder and first mayor. She was also Zora Neale Hurston's best childhood friend. Edenville was a childhood home of the author, folklorist, and anthropologist Zora Neale Hurston. Much of her writings center around the town. Tens of thousands of people have come to Edenville for the Zora Neale Hurston Festival of Arts and Humanities each year. We have the ability to actually do the groundwork for establishing a year-round historic, cultural historic preservation tourism hub in Eatonville. Doubling the space at Zora's place on Clark Street would be the first site of the hub, plus an overnight resident for artists and scholars and a cultural heritage tourism and training facility. Commissioner Emily Bonilla noted how histories have been hidden or lost in other communities because of racism, burnings, and killings. But Eatonville has has survived, it's prospered, and it's a very historical place that we definitely have to help preserve and continue to tell people the story of Eatonville. Orange County gave the PEC provisional approval for certain investments on its part. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion passes and it is unanimous. I can say to you that we literally are within two years of being able to see a part of what we're calling now the Eatonville Renaissance. And this will bring jobs and tourist dollars to Eatonville, something that's needed. Absolutely. You, you know, as I said, you're, you're very prescient here. You've got the jobs. This is about economic development. Economic development is key to businessman Donovan Williams, who runs 3D Tire Company Incorporated since 1987. His father started the business in 1985. Williams also served on Eatonville's Community Redevelopment Board, or CRA. He was instrumental in the designation of Eatonville as a Florida Main Street community. But that was something um, I'm proud of. We had uh, I had the opportunity to go to Tallahassee to get to Main Street uh, designation is used to bring economic growth to some extent to your to Eatonville. But he wants to see more for his town, like a comeback of some historic performances. 
Another thing that's been talked about through the state is the Chitlin circuit. The Chitlin circuit was, is, is a part of the circuit where um, um, black performers stopped in different areas and performed. And Edenville was one of those destinations as well. He says with time and the present administration, things can happen to revitalize and still preserve the town that is celebrating its 135th anniversary. Former town council member Angie Gardner is now Eatonville's new mayor. We say that we want development and I'm for development as long as it's right for the people. This Hungerford Elementary School teacher says, but first the town has to do some updating. In most cases, they have impact fees. We don't have impact fees. So we lose out and we've lost out on a lot of development dollars. It's not the developer's fault, but we need to update those policies. So all that money that's slipping through the cracks, we need to capture those funds. The Hungerford Project, an 88 acre site is right across the street with plans for housing, retail shops, and an amphitheater. Is that the right fit for Edenville? Some of it, you know, but there's always a balance. You're going to have to give some, you're going to have to take some. But how much are we willing to give? That will be the decision for our citizens. What do you see on the horizon? Or what would you like to see for Eatonville to be, for people to know it as? To really be able to see Eatonville as an international destination for cultural heritage tourism and all things that really resonate with the creative mind. I want to see our citizens happy. I want the older people to be able to reminisce by something that they see here or there. That means that we've captured those remnants of history. But I want the younger people to say, hey, uh, when I get older, I want to live here. I want to stay here. It's history. It's something to be proud of that you actually came from this came from this area. Because if we don't preserve our history, then we vanish as a people. So many ideas from people who love and care about this community. Everyone here is excited to see what's next for Eatonville's future. Those of us at West who are incredibly proud to not only be able to tell the story of the town that Freedom built, but to be so close to this pocket of American history. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks for watching.